Hey there, grammar fans. So you are watching the first of the video series called Hashtag Grammar Fans, in which I, Sean Ruday, will provide ideas and insights into various forms of grammatical concepts and their usefulness. Part of the fun of Hashtag Grammar Fans is that not only are we exploring and understanding important grammatical concepts, but we're also doing so in a way that has some fun popular culture and current events kinds of connections. A little bit about me and my background in doing these video series. I'm a professor at Longwood University where I teach courses on writing and grammar instruction. I'm also an author with Routledge Ion Education of a number of books on grammar and writing instruction. The ideas that I'll present in these short videos are based largely on the ideas in my Common Core Grammar Toolkit books. There's a Common Core Grammar Toolkit book for grades 3 through 5 and one for grades 6 through 8. So if you are interested in the ideas presented in these videos, I strongly encourage you to check out these books and I think you'll find those ideas will really build off nicely of the concepts and activities that we'll explore in these video series. Today we're talking about one of my favorite grammatical concepts, which is the grammatical concept of absolute phrases. And given that we're currently in October, the month of Halloween, we're going to explore some Halloween themed absolute phrases and those can be ways for you to make these concepts and these examples a little more relevant and exciting for your students as well. So an absolute phrase is something that authors Colin and Funk in their Understanding English grammar book called a full sentence modifier, meaning that they assert it doesn't explain or describe a specific element of a sentence like an adjectival or adverbial in piece of piece of information would, but instead provides information about the sentence as a whole. Absolute phrases are really useful tools for effective writing because they allow an author to zoom in on a particular aspect of a sentence and really call the reader's attention to that particular component of the sentence. Absolute phrases are made up of some kind of noun phrase and a post noun modifier that follows it. The most frequent post noun modifiers that will follow these noun phrases are participles. You might have, for example, clause extended the cheetah attacked. In that sentence, clause extended is your absolute phrase. It zooms us in on a particular aspect of the cheetah attacking. But absolute phrases can be structured with a number of other post noun modifiers as well. Another example that Colin and Funk present in their book, in Understanding English Grammar, is hands above his head, the suspect advanced towards the uniformed officer. So their hands above his head is our absolute phrase. It starts with the noun hands, has that prepositional phrase, in that case, above his head, describing the hands, so that's our post noun modifier, and then zooms us in on that particular aspect of the image of the suspect advancing towards the officer. But we're going to take a look at some ha fun Halloween themed absolute phrases and think about how they add some pop and add some zoomed in components to some related sentences. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the sentence, the witch motion toward us, which in itself is a great Halloween theme sentence. It provides important information, possibly something you might see in a haunted house or in a Halloween themed television show or movie. But if you add an absolute phrase to it that really zooms us in on a particular aspect of that sequence, such as long pointy fingers extended, the witch motion toward us. And in that sentence, we still have that original independent clause of the witch motion toward us, but we're adding that absolute phrase, long pointy fingers extended, a noun phrase and a post noun modifier that really zooms us in on a particular aspect of that sentence and allows us as readers or listeners to really focus our attention on something especially important that the author probably wants us to grasp. So let's la wrap up with one more sentence and absolute phrase in our Halloween themed discussion of this concept and its impact on effective writing. This one starts with the independent clause 
the scared children sprinted away from the haunted house. So in itself, a great Halloween-themed sentence, but if we add the absolute phrase, their screams piercing the air, it gives it even more of that spooky Halloween element. That lets us create the entire sentence, their screams piercing the air, the scared children sprinted away from the haunted house. And through the combination of that absolute phrase and its associated independent clause, we really get that strong image and strong understanding of exactly what's going on and allows us as readers and listeners to focus in on a specific aspect of that concept. So remember, absolute phrases are great tools that authors can use to focus the reader or zoom the reader's attention in on a particular aspect of something happening in the sentence. They're full sentence modifiers because they provide understanding of what's going on in the sentence as a whole, but they also allow us as authors to zoom in on a particular element that we really want to call the reader's attention to. If you think of these as related to photography, a sentence without an absolute phrase is more of a panoramic image. A sentence with an absolute phrase adds a zoomed in component to that initial panoramic image. Thanks so much for watching our first hashtag grammar fans video. We'll be back shortly with discussion of strong verbs and their importance in sports writing. We'll also take a look at indirect and direct objects and their connections with the Bachelor and Bachelorette television series. So lots of good stuff on the way. Thanks again.